Hey everybody, this is Ron, and today I'm going to be reviewing Thuvia Made of Mars. This is the fourth novel in Edgar Rice Burroughs' Barsoom series. I reviewed the first three books on my channel, and you can find them in my John Carter playlist. I'll post the link in the description. I will say right off the bat that I didn't enjoy this book as much as the first three, but that's not because the focus has now shifted to John Carter's son, Cthoris, instead, because I actually really like him him as a character. The problem for me really comes from the concepts that Edgar Rice Burroughs lays out in this novel. I've praised him for his endless imagination in my previous reviews, but here it seems like he's just throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall and unfortunately only a couple of things stick. I'll start off with the things that I like. I like that the focus is on Thuvia and Carthoris. Both characters appeared for the first time in the second novel, Gods of Mars, so it was nice to read an adventure where they are both front and center. I didn't feel like it lessened this book because John Carter wasn't the main character. I think the Warlord of Mars gave John a proper send-off without killing him off because there was really nowhere else to go story-wise. He already saved Dejah Thoris a bunch of times and any more rescues would have been overkill. Not that I would be against reading another novel with him coming back into the fold, but I was okay with him only being mentioned briefly. The reason this works for me is because he still exists in this world. Burroughs didn't kill him off and leave a bad taste in readers' mouths, and I think he was smart to do this. I can't speak on any of the other stories in the series because I haven't read them yet, but for now, I like that John is the warlord and he's living happily with his wife Deja Thoris while his son goes on adventures. I think this is what they should have done with the Star Wars sequels, for example. After the legacy characters got one last adventure and a proper send-off just like John, they could have taken a back seat to let the new characters shine and only appear briefly instead of of dying unceremoniously because without those core characters that world becomes less interesting to me at least. The other aspect I liked was Edgar Rice Burroughs amazing navigation concept that he has Carthoris come up with which is basically a GPS and autopilot unit for his ship. I love when older sci-fi writers predict the future, and this is one of the most fascinating examples. It's also not just a throwaway. It works itself into the story pretty seamlessly. So yeah, that was great. The real problem with the book for me was that it has the same plot as the last two books. Another princess is kidnapped, and now the hero has to go on a quest to save her. People have warned me that this would happen over and over again, and although Burroughs still manages to make the world of Barsoom colorful and interesting, it does get a little tiresome, especially four books in. My other major gripe with this book is the Lotharians. They're an ancient race of Martians who can basically conjure up imaginary beings and use them for their huge armies. This is where Burroughs goes a little too far for me because he reminds me of a little kid playing with his toys with his friend and trying to one-up him like, okay, well my guy can make imaginary people come to life and they'll form a whole army and they can't be killed and, and they could beat your guy. It, it just went too far for me and I know he tries to make sense of it, but I just wasn't buying it. The romance between Thuvia and Carthoris is okay. I like that there's a little dramatic tension there because Thuvia is promised to Kulan Tith. And I like that instead of being angry about it, Carthoris is still very honorable and he helps Thuvia anyway because he loves her. As far as the action goes, it's pretty solid. Burroughs is always consistent with exciting locations and action. So I didn't really find anything bad about any of that stuff. There are also plenty of creatures that the hero has to fight, which is a staple for this series. So no complaints there. The novel does have an abrupt but satisfying ending that's not so much a cliffhanger like there was in Gods of Mars, for example, but it does get you excited to read the next book. And I could definitely tell that Burroughs designed it to be that way this time because at this point, he was being asked to continue this series just like with his Tarzan novels. So even though this is probably my least favorite of the four that I've read so far, 
I would still recommend giving it a try if you liked John Carter's adventures in the previous books. Even though the story and some of the concepts fell flat for me, there were still a lot of really imaginative concepts and locations to keep me reading. So check out Thuvia Made of Mars, and if you've already read it, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content, and thanks for watching. Hey everyone, it's Ron here with a quick announcement. When I started this channel, I was reading and reviewing the Dune books and other sci-fi related material, and most of you might not know that I'm also a musician. So when I was reading these sci-fi books, I started to get inspired and decided to make my own soundtrack to use for my videos, and now I'm excited to tell you all about the first volume in the Ron Reviews original soundtrack collection. This album includes the first 17 tracks featured on my channel, and it's available now exclusively on Bandcamp. Be sure to check the description of this video for the link to the album. Thanks so much for the support so far. I know I'm just starting out, but I hope you're having as much fun as I am. So check out the original soundtrack volume one on Bandcamp. This music is great if you want something moody and atmospheric to listen to while you're reading some science fiction. I think you're going to love it. Thanks.